Okay, everybody, I think we'll make a start. Um, good afternoon, and thank you all for coming along to this webinar session today to find out more about our computing and engineering courses at our McGee campus. <clears throat> Appreciate the time you're taking to join us this afternoon, and the session is scheduled for 45 minutes, so we'll try to stay within that time scale, and there will be some time at the end just to answer your questions. Um, so my name is Stephen, I'm from the marketing team here at Ulster. And I'm joined today by Maeve Paris, who is our Partnerships Manager. And Maeve works very closely with all of the FE Colleges, so she will be giving you a quick introduction just to explain the pathway for Foundation and Access students into our Computing and Engineering programmes at McGee. Um, after that, we also have our Associate Head of School with us, Dr. Brian Gardner. Um, Brian's going to take you through a short introduction to the school, and he's also joined by Dr. Justin Quinn and Marin Nysel and they'll both be giving you a bit more details about our engineering and computing programs and give you a bit of a, an insight into life at McGee as a student. Um, so throughout the presentation, you will have the opportunity to type in your questions. <clears throat> you can do that through the Q&A um, tab at the bottom or through the chat function. I'll be keeping an eye on those as we go along and try and answer a few as we go, but I'll also then put those questions to the team at the end through the, the Q&A session which we'll have uh, time for. Um, so yeah, we'll kick off then, we'll make a start and I will hand over to Maeve for her introductory piece. Thanks Maeve. Thanks Stephen, good afternoon everybody and delighted you could be here today. I'm Maeve Paris, I'm the Partnership Manager. So I work with um, many of your course directors and course teams behind the scenes. I'm simply going to talk to you at this point about just the mechanics of how you can apply to us and how you will articulate to us. Um, we would love to see you here on campus. Um, so I'm going to just explain what an offer is, depending on whether you're an access student or you're a foundation degree student. Um, Brian, if you wouldn't mind moving forward to the first slide. So a quick reiteration, some of you might be on an access to HE diploma. In Northern Ireland, the awards that we validate are quite special. The purpose of the diploma is to get you into higher education, but Northern Ireland Access covers not just level three, so A-level equivalent, but it also covers GCSE, English and Maths equivalents. So any Northern Ireland Access diploma is acceptable for general entry. But some of our degree courses will have specific subject requirements. So if there's a specific subject requirement, you'll need to be doing a science or technology access diploma. But in most cases, any access diploma will get you in on most of our courses. And we received a lot of access um, students this year from areas including combined studies. If we move to the next slide, a gentle reminder of what the main aim of a foundation degree is. The main aim of a foundation degree is to secure relevant employment. The secondary aim is to offer progression to university through articulation. So every foundation degree will have one main articulation route. Others are possible, but there'll always be one dedicated articulation route and your course director should make you aware of that. Um, so uh, there are, there are, but there are other options as well. If we could move to the next slide, I'd like to explain to you how articulation works primarily for foundation degrees. If you're on a foundation degree, normally they are two years full time. And so we have a two plus two model. So you do two years full time on your foundation degree and then you join the linked course and you do a further two years. So in fact, it can take you just four years to do your full degree, which is what it would have taken you had you joined us in year one. So you join us in year two, but you're exempt from placement in year three because you will have done a work-based learning module. So for the sake of the 40 credits at level five, you can actually exempt yourself from the year, full year placement and proceed to year four. However, a lot of people do choose to take the optional year three placement. And my colleagues will tell you about some of the examples of placements that you can undertake. And it's generally a great idea. We wish to be fair and transparent with everybody. And so our offers are published. And all of our offers are aligned to a thing called the equivalence table. And the link to the equivalence table is there. On the next slide, you'll see how the equivalence table works. I've just taken a snippet of it. So let's say my degree required three A's at A level. The offer for the foundation degree, which is on the far left, would tell you that that means 70% overall mark and overall 70% in your level five modules. 
For those on an access diploma, you need to get 75% overall. So you can see that the equivalence table specifies the grades for each offer. If we drop the offer, again, you'll know immediately what the change to the offer is from that equivalence table. It's published and updated regularly. Um, and I just want to run through two particular offers to show you how they work. So on this slide, we have the computer science offer. Um, computer science is asking for BBB at A level, no specific subject requirements. So the equivalence table tells us that you need to have a pass and a foundation degree with an overall mark of 55% and a minimum mark of 55% in all taught level five modules. Just to explain to you what's going on there, because you may think what's happening. Um, that means all the modules apart from work-based learning. So you'd need to get 55% minimum in all of those level five final year modules. And likewise, the offer for the access diploma is an overall 65% in the access diploma. And then you also need to have your English and maths, but bear in mind that you do have NICATS maths in your access diploma. So that level two maths that you do will give you the equivalence and your access diploma also covers GCSE English equivalence. Moving to the offer for um, engineering, which is slightly different. So as you can see, the BN Johns in Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, it requires three Bs as well, but you also need to have one from a list of A-level maths, further maths, physics, etc. Um, the foundation degree offer is still straightforward. It's passed in a relevant subject. So for example, if you're in Northwest Regional College and you're doing the foundation degree in mechanical engineering, you can then go straight on to the mechanical and manufacturing engineering top-up degree. 55% overall and 55% in all taught level five modules. Because there's a subject requirement in the offer for the access diploma, we do need a level three access program in science or technology. Again, with 65% um, overall mark. And then you'll notice that you also need to get 65% in your NICATS maths level, level two module as well. And that's to align with the fact that there is a subject requirement for that particular offer. Moving to the last slide, um, just to explain to you that if you want to go onto the full-time courses, you need to apply through UCAS. If you wish to apply to the part-time courses, you apply directly to us at the university and you can apply for part-time up until pretty much the day that the course starts. People often say to me, are we guaranteed a place? And obviously nothing is guaranteed in life apart from death and taxes, but we have places for you. We will make you an offer. And if you meet the offer, you're in. In terms of the foundation degree, if you meet the terms and conditions of the offer, you'll get into year two. If you meet the offer for the access diploma, you'll secure a place in year one. And just before I leave you and pass you over to my colleagues, I would like to say one thing. Um, I consider myself very privileged to work in McGee. I'm based in McGee, even though I work on all the other campuses and colleges as well. And I think McGee is the best campus to work and study in. Um, what you need to know as well is that we are the top university in Northern Ireland for computer science. We are the top university in Northern Ireland for mechanical engineering. And those things are measured by student satisfaction and employability. And I'm speaking specifically about this year's Guardian University Guide. We're 13th in the UK for electrical and electronic engineering. And our own vice chancellor will tell you that McGee is the happiest campus of the university. And in fact, is probably one of the happiest campuses in the whole of the United Kingdom in terms of student satisfaction. So I'm unashamedly biased in my recommendation of McGee. I consider myself very privileged to work there. We would love to welcome you there to come and study on our courses. I'm now going to hand you over um, to Brian Gardner, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the school itself. Over to Brian. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, so as Leah said, I'm the, the Associate Head of School for the School of Computing, Engineering and Intelligence Systems on the McGee campus. I also uh, am accompanied today then with my colleagues Martin Meisel and Justin Quinn. Um, they are the undergraduate course directors for our Computing and Engineering courses. So just to give you a very brief overview of, of what I'm going to discuss today, um, I'll touch on campus life at McGee, outlining some information about the McGee campus. Hopefully some of you had an opportunity to visit the campus prior to the, the COVID restrictions to see your facilities. 
Um, and if not, hopefully, uh, when restrictions start to lift, that you do get an opportunity to visit us in the near future. Marin and Justin then will talk you through the, some of the course specifics around our computing modules and our engineering modules. Um, they'll discuss some of the possible career opportunities and look at the interior requirements for the courses. And then hopefully at the end, then we'll have an opportunity for, for engagement and some Q&A at the end. So just as a way of background then, Ulster University itself is the largest university in Northern Ireland and the second largest university on the island of Ireland uh, across 11 universities. We're split into four campuses, if you're, if you're not aware, which is the Belfast, Georgetown, Corrine and McGee campus. And in total, we have approximately about 26,000 students across the, the university as a whole. The school in the School of Computing Engineering and Intelligence Systems, that's situated on the McGee campus. Uh, and we have approximately 5,000 students um, at McGee. And there's just shy of 1,000 of those in, in our school. Um, if you've never had the opportunity to visit the campus, it's situated right in the heart of the city centre. And it's not too far um, to travel from Belfast, it's about an hour and a half travel, from Dungannon, about the same, and from Donegal, and later, later Kenny and Donegal. It's about 40 minutes to travel to campus. So regardless of where you're, you're geographically located, um, it, it isn't a, a large distance to travel to get on campus. Just to note there that the building on the slide is one of our buildings on the McGee campus, which was built in 1863. So there is a lot of, of history and heritage associated with the campus, which becomes a really nice part of your university experience if you do come and, and study with us at McGee. I'm sure everyone's pretty familiar with the city itself. It's very much a cultural city in my eyes, and there's a number of events that are organised each year by the local council, which, which everyone can avail of. Some examples are just shown on the, on the screen there. So there's the Halloween festival and fireworks display each year. The Clipper event um, comes along with the Time Festival along the quay. Uh, and there's also a number of music festivals, etc., as well, that takes place in the city. So it's a very vibrant city, um, and it's very well known for its um, socialising and great pubs, bars, restaurants, etc. So there's plenty for you to do um, in, in the city when you're not studying or when you're not doing your university work. I did mention that McGee is a well-established campus, um, but it's also one with state-of-the-art teaching and research facilities as well. Um, one example of that would be the 11 million pound teaching block that was built about two and a half, three years ago now. Um, and that's just the picture showing there on, on, on the slides. We have a number of large lecture theatres within the teaching block. Um, some can hold up to 250 people. And then we also have a large number um, the group teaching uh, rooms as well. So kind of breakout rooms, um, which are used within, within our lectures and our delivery within our, uh, within our school. It's a great facility. It has plenty of open access area for students. Uh, it has student hubs um, on each of the floors and also has two cafes as well. So somewhere for you to go to get refreshments in between your, in between your classes. Some of you may be aware of heard of the study deals that are currently in progress across Northern Ireland. Um, and I would like to at this point just highlight the study deal in the Northwest and the association with that and their school. So it, um, the school is due to receive um, approximately 44 million specifically for computing and engineering in the next three years. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really to support two main projects um, proposed by the school. And the first is CIDRA, which is the Centre for Industrial Dig Digitization, Robotics and Automation, which is aligned around our engineering provision and our engineering research within the school. And the second project is the CARI project, which is the Cognitive Analytics Research Laboratory, which is aligned around our computing vision and then also the computing research as well aligned to that. So this is a really great boost for our school, having that significant budget, um, and that allows us to upgrade our lab equipment, buy new lab equipment, and provide fantastic facilities that can be used both for teaching and for research within the school. I'd like to briefly have reasons of why you would want to come and study with us like right in our school on the McGee campus. Uh, and one indicator, key indicator, is really the feedback that has been obtained from previous students. And one way we can get that is via this uh, survey called the National Student Survey, the NSS. And that's an independent survey which is conducted across all universities, so 396 universities across the UK. 
It's conducted independently by um, a company, a third party company. Uh, and they ask different questions to the students around their experience on their particular course, the quality of the teaching in the course, the materials delivered, the feedback, etc. So it's a really in kind of in-depth survey, um, getting the feedback from, from the students' experience. Within the school, we thankfully have been very consistent in scoring really well in the National Student Survey over the last number of years. And in this year, particularly 2020, we um, have some exceptional scores um, and some really great positive feedback from our students. Um, one of the key results recorded is the overall student satisfaction score. So I've just um, jotted down a few there for some of our courses. So you can see that top one, which is our mechanical and manufacturing engineering course, has scored 100% this year uh, in the overall satisfaction score. And that's absolutely exceptional to, to get 100% and exceeds well beyond any of the other mechanical and manufacturing engineering courses across Northern Ireland. Two other courses I just noticed there is the BSc Honours in Information Technology, which scored 90.6%, and the other is the Computer Science, Honours Computer Science scored 87.9%, which are both really excellent results, and they're well above the subject sector average. Um, I just noted there that the subject sector average is 768 so we're about 11, 10, 11 percent above that, which is fantastic. Again, it's something we're really proud of within the school that we do get that really positive feedback from students, and hopefully it gives you an indication of you know, the quality of the courses that we do offer within the school. I've already touched on some of the facilities that McGee as a campus offers um, or does offer, uh, and I'd just like to highlight one or two more specific facilities that we have within the school. Uh, one example is the Allstate uh, Computer Lab that we have. So in 2019, Allstate, which is the uh, largest IT company in Northern Ireland, sponsored one of their labs for us. So they, so they donated £50,000 for us to buy new IT equipment for one of our computing labs. So that's a 55 seater lab, and that's dedicated specifically for our students within the school. So it's, it's not open up to any other you know, school within the, uh, within the, the campus. Uh, and this lab now has all the state-of-the-art computing equipment that, that's used for teaching with our courses. We also have a number of recent purchases in our engineering lab as well. So one shown in there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, which is the robotic KUKA manipulator arm. Uh, and this is the type of equipment that you'll see in industry. Uh, and it's a type of equipment then that you get exposure to while um, on our engineering courses. So again, it's, it's fantastic for students to get exposure to this industry type um, kind of robotic platforms while, while, while studying with us. Lastly then, I'd just like to mention the engagement that our school has with employers. Um, I just added some of their logos there, the examples of small SMEs right up to, to multinational companies that we engage with. And not only do these companies help shape our curriculum for our courses by telling us what type of technologies that we should be teaching and what we should be teaching to ensure that they're in the student industry ready whenever they, they do graduate and go out looking for jobs. But they also offer a number of opportunities for our students as well. So they offer internships, placement opportunities, uh, prizes for highest achieving students, uh, and also graduate jobs as well for, for our students. So you can see we have a really good uh, relationship with both a wide range of engineering and computing companies uh, within both sectors. So at this stage then, I'm going to hand you over to Mara Nysel. She's the course director for our computing fit provision, and she's going to discuss some of the courses that we have on offer within computing. Okay, thank you, Brian. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, Stephen, can you give me host access? Yeah, thank you that should very be much. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I would just re like to reiterate um, the welcome that you have received from both um, Maeve and Stephen and Brian here this morning. My name is Maren Nysel. Um, I'm the undergraduate courses coordinator for our suite of computing courses that we have based here within the school. Um, my email address there is on the, the title slide. You can contact me at any time 
for any information that you need in relation to your application or just the course in general. So do make a note of my email address. I do try to respond quite quickly to student queries. Um, so if you do have any, then please, you're more than welcome to contact me after the session today. So um, this is the suite of uh, courses that we currently have on offer for 2021. Um, Maeve kindly reviewed the entry requirements with you for, for these courses. So although I have put it up there on that slide, I'm not going to go over that again. Um, what I'm going to do is just outline to you what you will learn in each of those courses. And then if you do have any questions, I'll answer them for you at the end. So I'm going to begin here, first of all, with the uh, BN Honours Artificial Intelligence. This course is in its second year. Um, we started this course uh, just over two years ago. We started preparing for uh, delivering this course because we, we saw a market need there. Um, we realized from our engagement with our employers that artificial intelligence, AI skills, were very much in need now at this current time. Um, now, AI itself is nothing new. You know, when I was studying, I studied artificial intelligence, I'll not say when, but um, it, has, it has been around from the mid 50s um, uh, and coincides with the development of computing technology. So seeing that need um, within industry now, we decided just, over two years ago to, to um, prepare our students for working in, um, in artificial intelligence roles and therefore we, we, we're, we're now delivering um, this, this course which has speciality modules embedded within it. Um, you can see here uh, it is a BEng course. Um, being a BEng course there is that subject requirement, that science subject requirement. Um, that is needed in order to uh, secure entry to the course. And the reason being there is that because um, you do need to have that higher level of mathematical ability um, in order to complete the course. You can see from the slide here in year one and in year two, our students will uh, study two degree level um, mathematic mo mathematics modules in Mathematics for Engineering 1 and Mathematics for Engineering 2. And the reason why those higher mathematical skills are necessary is because of the algorithms that are necessary um, for use in um, AI systems. So um, what I've highlighted here on this slide are essentially, you can see there in the gold color, they are the modules that are specifically different for this particular course. Some of the other modules then are common to our other courses, um, mainly the computer science course. And therefore, there is that little bit of overlap um, between the AI course and the computer science course. Um, all of our students will study Java programming language in first year. So you'll have software development one and software development two. And in that module, in those two modules, you'll be introduced to both the fundamentals of programming per se, um, but specifically then uh, using the Java language. Um, then we have Mathematics for Engineering 1, um, which is uh, unique to the AI course, um, following on then in year two with Mathematics for Engineering 2. All of our computing students in first year will study database systems. So um, in, in, in this module, you'll gain a fundamental understanding of how to design, develop and implement a relational database management system. Core to uh, core subjects that are, are necessary at, at first year. Then we have the computer hardware and operating systems, which exactly, you know, does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, teaches students about the computer hardware and also brings in um, a range of different op operating systems. Um, we're introduced, we're introduced operating systems in first year because we see that there's a need for our students going out on placement to be experienced in using more than just Windows based operating systems. So they're introduced in first year. Students are encouraged to download Ubuntu and um, to you know, uh, learn and develop 
those skills at that point in time. Then we have Artificial Intelligence 1, and that follows on with AI, Artificial Intelligence 2 in second year. In, in, those, in both of those modules, they are core to the AI subject. So in those modules, our students will learn essentially what AI is, um, how can we design computer systems which uh, learn the way humans learn, have that same behavior, can make informed, rational decisions, um, can learn in general, whether that is deep learning um, or surface learning. So how do we design systems which have that learning capability, the way that we as humans have that learning capability? So there are three modules which are dedicated to that theme, um, which um, build upon the, uh, the AI technology. So the three there, AI1, AI2, and computational intelligence technologies really go into that in depth so that by the time our students come to their final year they are writing the algorithms um, which can then be used in AI technology. In second year the common modules there with our computer science course are in the in the dark blue color. We have UX which stands for user experience. So at the root of everything that we do in computing is, uh, is focused on the user and what the user needs are. So that module really focuses in on learning how users interact with the technology so that we can design technology which um, suits their needs, which will be useful and usable for them. Um, object oriented programming and modeling and algorithms and data structures, they are two modules that um, teach the students a C++ programming language, um, which begins in the first semester with um, object oriented programming and modeling and then continues on in the second semester with algorithms and data structures. Professional development is um, a module that is dedicated to developing students um, as computing professionals. So in doing that, it's about, it's about employability in general. It's not only about employability for securing placement, it's also about employability after you graduate. So within that module, there's a lot of um, dedicated focus work done with the student on an individual level. Um, in that you know you're getting students ready for the range of interviews that our students will go for in relation to placement and graduate opportunities. So there's a lot there that is done in in preparing students for securing both placement and graduate roles. And then we have computer networks and security, which again does exactly as it says on the tin. It's about um, creating, uh, com creating computer networks, the different computer networks that you can have, and how do you design those systems with security in mind? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's rarely, uh, you know, we, we would often see in the media, you know, instances where major companies have been hacked, where personal data has been lost, where it has been stolen, etc. You may have been notified in the past about your personal data having been stolen. So there are strategies that you do need to be aware of in order to make sure that those computer networks are as secure as they possibly can be. All our students undertake third year placement. Third year placement is compulsory on all our courses. Um, and really third year placement is the forerunner to our graduate recruitment because I believe that if we can support our students in secure and placement, you'll get a job, right? Our graduate employability st stats, as Maeve and Brian has uh, just uh, alluded to, they are amongst the top graduate employability stats within the university. We have, I think that the headline figure is 86% graduate employability, where our students will be in graduate level roles six months after they graduate. And the reason that employability figure is so high, we're, we're next actually to the nursing school because all of their students get jobs. So within the university, you know, we're, we're really up there in terms of supporting our students to secure those graduate positions. Um, it is compulsory 
all students are expected to do it. They're expected to do it or to gain exemption from it. I know that there may be some students here on the call that come from a foundation degree and with, within your foundation degree, you'll undertake an element of work-based learning. That element of work-based learning has been validated by Ulster and approved in order to grant you exemption from that year long placement. Now, students who come from a foundation degree, we don't make it compulsory that students seek exemption. It is entirely your choice. And what I've noticed over the past two or three years is that more and more students coming from a foundation degree are taking the year long placement to have that longer uh, time period within industry. Um, which is obviously then going to be very useful for you whenever you would be that Ulster graduate and um, searching for your graduate positions. So whilst the option is there, we don't make it compulsory, it's entirely a student's choice. But either way, you have to complete placement or gain exemption from it. And one way of gaining exemption from it is having completed the work-based learning module in the foundation degree that you're currently studying. In final year then, all of our students undertake a final year project, and that is a year long project, which runs across both semesters. That project is um, carried out in, in supervision by an academic member of staff. So depending then upon your area of interest, um, you can then develop that interest into your final year project. Well, or that interest is in, um, some sector of uh, systems development, um, AI technology, um, whatever that may be. There's a range of different subject areas that the students would get involved in for their final year project. Um, but that project is done, it's not a timetabled project as such. Um, it is done very much independently um, with project supervision being given by, and guidance given by an academic member of staff. Then in final year, there are also um, a, a range of final year modules. Now, for the artificial intelligence students, there is no choice. The modules that we have validated for that course, they are the modules that our students will study. Um, the three modules there in the dark blue uh, text, they are modules that are common across our final year with the dedicated um, AI module, Computational Intelligence Technologies. Um, being dedicated to the AI students. So cybersecurity module, it, it continues the theme of um, security, which was introduced in first year. Intelligent robotics is about programming robotics, robotics uh, robotic um, using robots that can maneuver around um, obstacles that come in their way, that can react to unforeseen circumstances. Um, a range of different skills that are, that are needed in, in designing robots. And then the third one there, computer vision. Computer vision is about how to design computing technology which mimics um, the way that our human vision um, works. So I've explained there um, a lot of the core modules. So if that's AI, I'll move on now and you can see there the, uh, the next course, courses, sorry, the BSc Honours Computer Science. And then to accompany it, we also have the BSc Honours Computer Science Software Systems Development. Um, you can see there that in the, the first year, there's a, a number of common modules um, that are taken with our previous course, AI. The, the modules that are different uh, in year one relate to the mathematics for computing. Um, for computer science and also for our IT course, we don't um, specify a science-based subject, so we don't have that prerequisite. We, 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 what we do is we teach the mathematics that you need for, um, that underpin computing in, in the first semester of your first year. So our computing students are on that separate strand of mathematics there in year one. Then we have uh, another module which is different, which is systems analysis and design. And that module looks at um, looking at systems overall and how you can design a system, what is involved in designing that system. First of all, analyzing it and then designing it and coming up with that, um, that prototype 
that, that, that can then be used as part of a, a, a system specification. Computer hardware and operating systems uh, and database systems are common as well. You'll also see there that UX, object-oriented uh, programming and modeling, uh, algorithms and data structures, professional development and computer networks and security, common again, um, and I just spoke about them previously. Um, two different modules uh, that reside here within the computer science and software systems development stream are um, mobile computing and web application development. Um, three years ago, we were undergoing a, a revalidation process. And as part of that process, um, I was leading the team through this. So what I did was I surveyed all of our current final years at that time to find out what they were working on when they were on placement, what skills they wished they had have had whenever they went out on placement. And two, um, two subject areas came back from all of that, that survey and that, uh, that work that was done. And the two areas were around mobile technology and web development. So we introduced these two modules as part of that whole process to make sure that our students were supported in having the knowledge and um, the skills and some of the skills that are needed in order to be successful when they're on placement. So those two modules then um, look at, obviously mobile computing looks at developing mobile apps for a range of different mobile platforms. And web application development looks specifically at the web development theme using um, frameworks, uh, using PHP scripting language in order to be able to connect your front end, um, your front end uh, website to your back end database. So there's a lot of, um, excellent skills that are involved in, in both of those uh, two modules. Then we have in final year, um, you'll notice there that I have in brackets, um, SSD is, is, is in brackets. Those modules that have SSD in brackets, they are the ones that are compulsory for students who wish to remain on the software systems development stream. Um, the, the main difference between the straight computer science and the software systems development stream are the modules that the students can take in final year. You can see there the first module is enterprise computing. That is a module that looks very much at the use of cloud technology um, that is uh, used within, within the software industry. Um, I'm a member of the AWS Educate Consortium, so within that, there's a lot of cloud computing expertise that, that we have, that, 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 that we teach our students um, within, within that module. Um, it's estimated that in five years time, 80% of the software development that is currently going on in industry will make use of cloud technology, will make use specifically of AWS technology. So having that um, prerequisite knowledge and gaining that in your final year between enterprise computing and concurrent and distributed systems, very valuable to our students, which all goes towards ensuring that our students have excellent employability skills. Cybersecurity is common. I mentioned cybersecurity um, before. I can see Stephen here raising his hand. Am I, am I talking too much, Stephen? Uh, uh, give, me, give me a few more minutes. Uh, here, just just to about my time, but no, that's fine. Okay. Um, so the other modules then that we have, Advanced Web Technologies follows on from year two. Um, we then have as well Computer Vision, um, Intelligent Robotics, mentioned them before and then a new module, Mixed Reality, which um, teaches, skill, teaches our students very important skills around virtual reality technology and augmented reality technology. So the next course um, that we have is the information technologies. The main difference between the computer science and the IT course for us is around the, the, the web development theme that our students who uh, take information technologies that web development theme continues the whole way through the course. So if you find that that is where you see yourself, um, it's, the, it's the kind of subject that you enjoy, then information technologies is for you. If you find that you uh, enjoy programming, computer science and the software systems development course is for you because you'll get exposure to the range of programming languages. You'll have Java, C++, Python, um, uh, 
are, all of that will be taught within your computer science module. Information Technologies looks at the whole web development side of, of, the, of, the, of industry and teaches modules around that. So teaches there highlighted in the gold color, build business information systems, management information systems, internet technologies, HTML5, CSS, um, business intelligence, looking at uh, making sense of all of that data using a variety of different tools like Power BI. Network operating systems, um, again, developing the skills in a range of different operating systems like Linux and Unix. Advanced web development then brings in your, um, your JavaScript, your Node.js, um, AngularJS, those kinds of technologies that, that, that will get you um, a, a job in the sector. And then finally, cybersecurity, which is um, also common to the other courses. Brian already alluded to the, the number of employers that we work with. My philosophy is if we can get as a student a good placement, you'll get a good graduate job. And these are all the icons of um, the companies that we work with that are students. Well, some of the companies, I really would need a bigger slide if I was going to put up an icon of all of the companies. But some of the big ones that you may be aware of that we work with that our students get placement roles with, they get graduate roles then following on from that and they do fantastic work and they really get a very valuable placement experience, which then leads on to excellent graduate opportunities. So I'm going to stop talking now and I'll hand back now to um, Stephen, but I'm happy, I'm more than happy to take any questions that anybody has about anything that, uh, that I've just mentioned here in relation to your courses and our modules. Thank you very much, Marion. That, that's a really good summary of our computing programs. I know there's so much to get through there, so it's hard to squeeze it all in within the time scale. But um, like Marion said, just get in touch if there's anything else that, that you need there. So we're going to pass over now to Justin, who is going to talk about the engineering programs. I'll just make you the host here, Justin. Okay, thanks, Stephen. So I'll share my presentation. Am I the host yet, Stephen? Um, there you go. Perfect. Thank you. And share screen. And this should be it. Okay, so I'm Justin Quinn, and I am the uh, course director for the engineering courses on campus uh, at McGee. So I would work quite closely with Marin and Brian and Maeve to manage the engineering aspects uh, and courses that are in the school. So look, the guys have told you already how uh, attractive it is to come to the McGee campus. We do have a unique offering that uh, makes it very useful for students that are coming both from foundation degrees and from other areas of access to come on campus and get a very one-to-one uh, -one exchange and get really help through your degree in a lot of ways from start to finish. So if we look here, the, uh, sorry, I'm way on one slide. If we look here at the courses that are available on campus, we have a number of engineering courses on campus here and these have increased over the last number of years. So. We have the BN Honours Mechanical and Manufacturing, we have Electrical and Electronic Engineering, we have Renewable Energy Engineering, and then we have Electronic Engineering with Enterprise and Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering with Enterprise. Additionally, uh, we have a one-year foundation course that gains you entry to all the engineering and computing courses on campus. So there's lots of ways in to university. I suppose that's the message from that. And one of the things that, that, that we're really proud of, and, and we, we've said this a number of times as a team, but we don't, uh, we don't elicit you know, information from students or, or push them into saying these things about us, but have a look on our YouTube channel there and see what the students say in around graduation time about how they've uh, had their journey through 
McGee and how they've uh, got on with the staff and worked with the people that are that are there to make them as good as they can be. You know, the studying's there. These students here are old students of ours that have come back for, these are pictures from a, a, an industrial evening that we ran. And you can see all the companies here. For engineering in particular, you're looking at CDE, you're looking at Seagate, you're looking at Terex, Myola Precision Engineering. E&I over in Burnfoot and many, many, many others that uh, we would work along with on a regular basis. And that work for us can be research work where we're developing new technologies, but it's also technology transfer work. I know Brian earlier on showed you the robot, uh, welding robot that we've, we've invested in. And that, look, that goes directly into the developments that will take place around CDE and Hutchison's and Terex and many other of the uh, Mid-Ulster engineering companies that are with us. It would be a uh, remiss if I didn't show you once again the slide that says that engineering got 100% in the uh, NSAS. We're very proud of that, and that's good. And, and it's, we strive to do that, and there's the range of questions that the students are asked include things like, have you had the chance to make the best of yourself? Have you had the chance to be your best self as such, and that's really important. We see you students as an investment in our future. We like to make sure that you are as good as you can be when you leave us and that you've had an experience that you'll not forget, because we need you to come back. We need you to support the university. We need you to develop with the university, and when you're managing big companies or your engineering leaders in companies, we need you to come back and work with us and, and tell us how we can improve our courses and so on. And we do that regularly. And you know, some of the outcomes of this are things like the Allstate Lab that Marin organized with Allstate to increase the resources that we have on site. And you know, additionally, if you look down here at the, the likes of these Haas uh, CNC machines that we have within the engineering building, it gives you an idea of the sort of resource that we are interested in you taking charge of and the resource that we're interested in you interfacing with on the engineering degrees. We offer a very practical and industry facing engineering degree. Uh, while for uh, accreditation, which we have, you have to have all the theory and we have to have that high level of academic content. We are also very much uh, in favor of you having practical experience. So the likes of those machines, you get a number of opportunities over the years to interface with those machines, to learn how to program and drive CNCs, to learn how to operate the robots. Like for example, just this week, the first years were working with uh, one of the other lecturers here, programming the welding robot, just to complete straight line welds. But that, that's a step forward. And it gives them a, a, a knowledge of how it's done. And this is technology that will be the technology of the future in the engineering firms that we have around here. So you must know it. You know, we have less and less people to do the engineering jobs. So we need more and more automation. We need more and more smart technology. And the courses that Marin talked about in computing provide a back end for that smart technology. And your engineering courses employ that technology to bring you forward to uh, the next generation of, of manufacture, which is, it, which is what's called Industry 4.0. And we have a lot of work around that, not least our SIDRA program or our industrial digitalization building that will be built on campus over the next number of years. And Brian alluded to that. And we will, at that stage, invest in around 26 million in equipment that will support our engineering, our engineering firms. And that will be more suites of things like these robots, more suites of things like additive manufacturing machines where we can print metals, where we can print functional items. But not only that, it also gives us the opportunity for your student learning to be experimental, where you can use this equipment for you to manufacture and design. And, and, and as corny as it sounds, it's for you to realize the dreams that you have in your mind about what you will design and what you will make while you're on campus. And engineering at McGee is a perfect opportunity to do this. You know, I did, I did talk to a colleague one, you know, there very recently, and, and he got in trouble because he said some universities read engineering, but at McGee, we do engineering. So bear that in mind, we're very, very practical. 
in terms of what we expect you to do. And, you know, the feedback I get from employers are that the students that we put out of engineering can hit the ground running and can be useful immediately and understand how manufacturing works, understand how engineering works. And, and that's something we push very hard with you. You know, you choose engineering because you love doing it. And that, that should be your initial reason for choosing engineering uh, because it is one of those subjects you should get relatively passionate about because you're solving problems. You can make a change to the world. You can do all of that. But we all have to get paid. And, and engineering over a period of time is reasonably well paid. You know, your salaries are good now. There's lots of engineering jobs out there now. Engineers are in demand. I have lots of slides about this, but I haven't put them in here for this. But engineers are in demand. And if you care to do a quick Google search or whatever, you, whatever way you want to search it, you'll find that mechanical engineers and software engineers, followed by electrical engineers, are in demand in the highest amount in the world. So that's perfect for you because it means it gives you the opportunity to travel the world. It gives you the opportunity to choose where you want to work uh, and to choose the lifestyle that you want to have as an engineer. And you can see some of the data here on the screen around the average graduate starting salaries that are there for engineers. So general mechanical engineers are about 26,000 of a starting salary. And that's good, you can get more. You can get more, you generally don't get a lot less but you can get more, you can get lots more. Uh, for example, uh, an engineer in Stryker in Limerick, as a reasonably experienced engineer, will make in around 90,000 euro. A senior engineer will make probably over the 100. So lots of work out there and lots of opportunity if you're a useful engineer. And your usefulness starts with having a good degree, which is what we offer. And you know, in these facilities, we, we believe in teaching you within the engineering program. Now, I got one of the questions about online learning at, at the minute, and we can answer it more at the end, but what I will tell you is that our engineers are on site for some of their learning this year. They have to be on site. It's critical to the teaching of our courses. If it's not possible for them, we accommodate them, but uh, even today, there are students down in the lab, as I present to you here now, that are working away at some of their engine build that they do uh, and some of the coursework that they're doing as part of their design program. So they're down in the lab here. Uh, they're down in the lab. They're down working in the engineering building here and, and, and learning how to put into action all the theory that you learn as part of your course. So let's take a look at what's on the courses. Now, I always, portray engineering as being made up of three basic columns. Certainly mechanical is made up of, of uh, design, science, and maths. And each year you do a little more design, a little more science, and a little more maths. The maths that we do for engineering isn't theoretical maths. It's maths to give you an answer. It's, it's mathematical procedures to allow you to calculate something useful. How much power do I need? How much material do I need? Where's the center of gravity? Uh, what stress will this item take before it breaks? How much will it bend if I stand on it? How many, uh, how many tons of load can it take before fracture? And so on and so on. So the maths that you learn isn't maths for the sake of it. The maths that you learn with us is maths to do something useful. And if you look at what happens in year one, what we do there is we, do, we give you some math, some manufacturing, and some statics and dynamics, which is your physics of engineering. And that hasn't changed in thousands and thousands of years. Thousands of years ago, things went up, things went down. Gravity still existed, all those sorts of things were there. So you just learn how to put that into action. So your statics. Your statics is things like, if I have a, a column loaded from three, four different directions, how do I decide if it's going to stay up or not? If I have a bolted connection, how many bolts do I put on it? What do I tighten them to? What happens if I don't tighten them enough? What happens if I tighten them too much? So your statics and dynamics gives you all of those. Speed, distance, power, stress, strain, how things bend, how things stay bent, and how you avoid them bending in the first place. 
We then give you some information around manufacturing, and, and this is when you're picking into the lab. Uh, this is when you when you learn how things are made. Look, for any engineer that's out there, it, it's not untoward to say if you can't make things, you're not an engineer. So we we ensure that you can realize the CAD models that you create and bring them to real life. So realize them in metal, realize them in wood, realize them in composite, realize them in whatever material you have chosen for it. So we do that as part of your first semester. In your second semester, then we learn some electronics with our circuit analysis. We learn energy. Uh, we are a renewable energy center, so we learn energy. And we learn then fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, and then the big design module. And within that design module in your first year, you will manufacture uh, various things. In the past, we've done crane as a crane challenge. We've done trebuchets. We've done different things over the years. But you'll manufacture something as part of a group. And there's a nice competition at the end of it. I don't know whether uh, for the for the trebuchets that we created, if you can throw an orange more than 97 meters, then you'll be the new McGee record holder for it. In year two, we develop the things that you've done in year one. So as I say, in any of the engineering courses, and we'll have a look at them over the next few minutes, but it's a progression. So you learn a small amount in first year, you build on that in second year. If you go on placement, you'll have enough to use on placement. And then in final year, you bring yourself up to the qualified engineer status. Uh, so in year two, the highlights, materials, your professional issues obviously is there to ensure you get placement. Uh, and it's a very, very useful course. It allows you to polish your presentation, allows you to learn how to talk to people, allows you to learn how to present yourself and how to present the success that's been in your life up to that point. Uh, we learn about materials, and, and materials is my PhD area, and, and, and a fantastic area it is, very interesting, but not unless we know what to do with those materials and how to realize solutions to design problems, and, and that happens in your design and industrial applications. Again, in that year, you build things like, things like this Stirling engine here that I'm doing with the current set of second years, where it's a heat-powered engine. And you'll build that from scratch. You're given blank materials and you're asked to engineer them to very, very fine finishes so that the, that the machine works. You'll do engineering analysis, so that's more of your maths. You'll do more statics and dynamics, so a finer level of statics and dynamics. So for example, in first year, if you did one and two dimensional stress, in second year, you'll do three dimensional stress. And then we'll do some electronic systems design as well. Once you get to uh, the third year, some of you will go on placement. Uh, and Marin has already covered that. And look, we have an excellent placement facility in McGee. Uh, we generally get 97, 98% of, of our engineering students placed in such that there are lots and lots of engineering placements out there. Uh, and a very good experience it is for the vast majority of students. And, and we ensure that that happens by, by helping you along the way and by monitoring you when you're on your placement and, and helping you to get the best out of it. In terms of final year, final year becomes about you increasing the depth of your knowledge. So you'll, be a, you'll have heads full of maths, you'll have heads full of science at this stage. And in year four, you really are beginning to bring it to a, a close where you can really apply this to industrial projects. So in final year, the work you do is driven by industry by and large. Your final year project quite likely will be research informed or industry informed. The design and industrial applications three is a huge group project where in groups of five, we have an industrialist come in. In the past, we've had McCluskey uh, Engineering, we've had Terex, we've had ENI, we've had different projects, but they're real live projects for live companies. And you come in and, and, and representatives from the company will talk to you and we develop through that project. And you'll back it up with your mechanical science. In the second semester then, we learn uh, more about our computer-aided engineering. So we'll have a two years of solid works experience, but third year really, or fourth year really becomes about 
the simulation aspects of SolidWorks. So designing on screen should be second nature to you by then. At this stage then, we should be able to use our software to simulate the physics of what happens when a machine operates and do that on screen without having to create prototypes, without having to invest heavily in, in what it is we're trying to do. And we back that up with manufacturing technology. And then in, se in, in the second semester, final year, you'll, you'll have completed your final year project. So you can see that renewables and mechanical, if I go back, they're very much this, not the same uh, uh, structure, but they're very much the same uh, in terms of some of the modules that you'll do. Year one is the same, identical. And that's brilliant. So Stephen has raised a hand there. Am I, are we out of time, Stephen? Sorry, Justin. Yeah, just um, we're running over quite a bit. So, um, right, okay, I'll just be a, five more minutes. And that'll yeah, no worries. Okay, great. Thanks, Stephen. So you can see in the uh, course content for renewables, what we do is we replace some of the mechanical stuff with power systems. So engineering of control systems and engineering of power systems. This is directly related to grids, which you'll do in final year as part of your renewable energy and smart grids. So this is about taking the mechanics of how a machine works and applying it to renewable energy. And this gives you the chance then to uh, put that into operation. We're talking to NIE at the minute about making this uh, part of their power academy. So the electrical and electronic course that's coming up here, we're looking to do that and uh, develop you in, in terms of working for the major energy providers that are out there. So under pressure here, I shall go on through the electrical and electronic courses. And you can see here, standard electrical electronic fare, 50-50 uh, electrical, which is your, if you want a, a very quick, a description of the difference. Electrical involves big power, 5, 10, 100 kilowatts, uh, 500 kilowatts, megawatts of power, uh, and how you deal with that power, how you distribute it, how you transform it into something useful. The electronics is the control side of things, how you get sensors to pick up something, how you deal with signals, how you work with signals, and how you make things useful. So control is the electronics part of it. Now, Brian's there uh, as an electronics engineer, and he'll, he'll hopefully tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'm not an electrical and electronics engineer. I do understand it, but I'm not entirely, uh, uh, it's not my area of expertise. But we have a, a very nice course here designed out where we do 50% electrical and 50% electronic, making you very attractive to industry. Uh, and we have some developments in that course around programmable logic systems and the Internet of Things to bring you right up to date with the sort of technology that's coming into industry now. A, a course that's of interest and of great interest to our foundation degree students and the guys finishing a foundation degree, especially if you're on the gold program or doing it part-time, we offer a very condensed part-time course for mechanical engineering where you attend one day per week uh, over three years to complete your degree part-time. You need a foundation degree or equivalent to be able to enter this course. It is very uh, compact, but you can see here you'll attend, for example, semester one, uh, you'll attend on a Friday, semester uh, and on semester two on a Monday. Year two, I have students that will be part-time, 11 of them with me tomorrow, that will do design and CAE with me in the morning and then do engineering of control systems in the afternoon. And next semester, they'll do manufacturing technology and mechanical science uh, on a Thursday. Now, these, those days are fairly set, but they are subject to change. So it's important there that you realize what uh, suits you, and, and the part-time route may well suit you. Uh, if you want to find out more about it, it's probably better, considering the time constraints we have now, that you come and have a chat with me or drop me an email uh, and I can contact you and talk you through it. It's a condensed course, very extreme uh, in terms of what your learning is and, and condensed in that fact, faction, but some people it suits and I think it's a very good course. We've had very, we've had very good success with getting students through in this fashion. 
if you're not into the whole uh, very, very technical area of engineering, we offer a sort of a halfway house course where there are business modules each semester as well. So in terms of the mechanical engineering with enterprise development, uh, you'll take out some of the more technical subjects and we replace them with business subjects. And clearly the idea here is that you are savvy enough in technical content to be able to develop, to be able to design. You're not going to be at the hard end of design things, but you are going to be at the business development end of things. So looking at new venture creation, being one of those technical uh, entrepreneurs that looks at uh, how you can innovate and how you can develop products, how you can bring products to market and uh, all of the excitement that goes along with that. So we offer that in two courses. We offer it in the mechanical engineering with enterprise development and we offer it in electronic engineering with enterprise development. And look, the next slide really shows us that uh, we need all of this. Everything from tractors to fridges to tanks to military stuff is all interconnected now, both mechanically and electrically. And the courses that we have are designed to support that. And it involves things like machine learning, intelligent machines, machines that do mechanical operations, but have feedback and tell you how they are, tell you how they feel, tell you when they need something, tell you when they need fixed and so on. And we have projects that we've done with uh, local companies to do that, CDE Global in, in Cookstown. In particular, we did a project to sensorize one of their machines to enable predictive maintenance, to tell you when the machine's gonna need maintenance or when something looks like it may break down, uh, which of course for CDE it doesn't, but uh, it allows us to get that information from what is a fairly extreme atmosphere. So to, uh, to finish off, why McGee for engineering and computing? We have new investment, big investment coming to McGee in the next three years, and that's something you really want to be part of. Uh, with new equipment and its industry standard. We have reasonably small classes for engineering in particular, uh, and this means that you can get good interaction between you and the uh, lecturer and your support staff. Good mobility between courses, and we have that idea that you can never leave education. You can stay on and do research uh, and stay in the education, education bubble. So listen, thank you very much. Uh, I've just listed out the courses or the basic courses there that we have and, and you can contact myself or indeed contact Marin about any of the courses but certainly I know from uh, ourselves as course directors we're very keen to answer your questions and very keen to have you on site at McGee. There were a number of questions there and I sort of answered a couple of them but happy to take any more questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justin. Sorry to rush you along. I just wanted to leave some time for the questions. Um, but guys, just to let you know, we'll be sending out the link to this webinar afterwards. So if you missed anything, you can watch again. Um, also in that email, I'll um, leave the contact details um, that Justin and Myron have mentioned as well. So please uh, um, ask any questions if, you, if you've forgotten during the session here. But there are a few coming in here. Um, Justin, I know you answered a couple of these, but I think they're probably worth explaining to the group. Um, because these are kind of frequent questions that we would get through. Um, so there was one in from Darren about um, he doesn't have A-level maths, and this probably applies to a lot of the courses. Um, so he's entered into year two, and he, he just had a concern there, would it be harder for him to keep up? No, uh, I suppose is the short answer for that. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have very good support structures there for the maths, both across engineering and computing. Uh, your foundation degree should leave you in a good position uh, to complete any of the maths modules that are here. What you got to remember about, and Marin touched on this, and she's 100% right, what you got to remember about engineering and computing is it's using maths as a tool to elicit the answers that you need to get in a design scenario or in a calculation scenario. So we have all the structures there. You know, we'll use some software to do the maths, such as MATLAB and some other you know, physics-based softwares that you would use further on down the line. So you'll not be at any, any disadvantage at all not having A-level maths. Certainly your foundation degree, which Ulster, and, and I suppose Maeve can speak to this, but Ulster feed into this, the topics that are in the foundation degrees. So you know, 
it's a linked course. So the link is that we tell the, the we, we work with the, the, the FE colleges to ensure that the level of maths that you have is adequate to allow you to partake in the BN honors degree once you've come through your foundation degree. So hopefully that helps. There's lots of support there and there's lots of opportunities for you to uh, uh, garner support and lots of opportunities for you to, to use software to help along with your maths, which we find helps the students. Okay, perfect. Um, another question which is really common when we get, um, and again, you touched on it in your session, is about how would online learning work? I know by next September, it may look different and we hopefully will have more opportunities to, to do on-campus teaching, but um, you mentioned there about our blended learning approach and how that's already in place. And, you know, we have already, you know, two, nearly two full semesters experience of doing this. Um, but yes, we're on campus at, at present as well. Well, look, we we teach two practical courses, the, 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 the computing and, and the engineering. So there's a great requirement for uh, interaction between the lecturer and the student, uh, you know, whether it's developing software code or it's developing hardware for maybe a mechanical problem or an electrical or an electronic problem. And certainly practicals play a large part in the courses that we have. You know, to this end then, working with Brian and working with Marin and working with our head of school, we would identify what are called category one modules where you will be on campus. And we do this at the minute. Uh, there are areas of the courses that are online and they're online because obviously the campus access is restricted at the minute. And that's been quite successful this semester so far. Uh, we've had lots of students that have come onto campus for a short period of time and then gone back off campus and we ensure safety and we ensure all the regulations are adhered to while that happens. We do this in small groups, which in one way is a, is a bonus for the students as well, because you're getting a very personal uh, delivery of, of the practical work at that point. So assuming that uh, it is the case that you're online next September, that will continue. And, and I know from an engineering and computing uh, course director's point of view, we'll push hard, really hard to get you on campus as much as possible and facilitate that as much as possible. Uh, as a student body, it's very important to us that we know you and we learn with you uh, as we develop through the courses. So uh, we have a good solution there at the minute. And I think that solution will grow as time goes on. But hopefully we'll come to the far end of this uh, present situation and everybody will be back on campus. Certainly I know all the lecturers will be a lot happier and students will be a lot happier if we can all get on campus. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that goes for um, kind of any events that we have as well. So hopefully um, at some point after Christmas, um, we got, um, obviously depending on the guidelines, we'll be able to get you on the campus and see Ryan. I think everybody's um, mentioned about how good the D is in terms of facilities. So we'd really love to show you around. Um, so if there is an opportunity, we will be in touch by email just to let you know of any events that are, that are coming up. Um, another question came directly through to me was about placements. We've talked about the excellent relationships that we have with employers and the importance of placement here and get, getting you that experience. Um, There's just a question here asking, do the students have to find their own placements or does the university help with um, have a have places set up with organisations and support um, that recruitment process? I suppose Stephen, I, I can answer that one. Um, we have uh, the we we have a, an actual system that is used to support students in um, in making those applications. Um, employers will come to us if they you know if they want to get involved in the whole placement process and they're looking to recruit an, a placement student and they can advertise their role just in the same way as they would advertise any other job role um, the system that is being used it's a new system now this year we we don't have an, an older system called recruit but we've now moved to uh, a handshake is the is the tool that is used and it provides the students with uh, the ability to um, advertise themselves, just like you would set up um, a profile on Facebook, on LinkedIn. 
the students do the exact same thing, only it's a professional profile that they set up on Handshake and then they can use that in order to um, interact with, with the employers. Now we work with a range of employers, um, you know, on the slides there we showed you some of them, but they, they would be the ones that would be, I suppose, the most well-known ones. Um, in the Northwest area alone, we work with 65 companies, a lot of them that are small SMEs that maybe take one student or two students. To the, to the bigger ones, the like of your Allstates and your city, uh, city group that maybe take 10, 12 students. So there's that range of, um, of, of work-based learning partners that we have. And um, it is, you know, whilst we provide you with the platform, we provide you with the support, the guidance. We do so much one-to-one -one. in year two. <clears throat> um, we, 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 do, we, go, we go to extreme lengths in order to support our students, but it's like anything else. It's like applying for any job. You have to be prepared. You have to go for the interview. We can provide you with as much guidance as we can, but at the end of the day, the legwork has to be done by the students. Um, so yes, there is, there is quite a lot of support there to help our students get placements because, you know, as I said in my presentation, my philosophy is if we can get a student a placement, we can get you a graduate job. So many of our students will come back from their placement with a graduate job offer in their back pocket. And then that is the encouragement and the motivation that they need to hit the ground running in final year and to do their level best for themselves because they know they have that, they have that goal at the end of it that they know they're going back to, to a, a really good employer at the end of their degree. Okay. Yep, thanks Maren, plenty, plenty of support there. Um, there was another one just uh, from Scott here just about um, in the case that say exam results didn't go, go his way, um, and maybe didn't get meet the entry requirements. Is there any other options on the course? I think Justin, you, you mentioned about our foundation year could potentially be an option. So, so that that's an additional year really before. Um, on to year one. You know, at this stage, yeah, what I would be saying is, don't panic. Mm. You know, don't panic at this stage. Do your level best to achieve the best that you can achieve. There are options in August and they will be outlined and made available to you in August. But at this stage, it's, you know, it's not a time to be, you know, saying, oh, I'm not going to pass this or I'm not going to do as well as what I thought I was going to do. It's about putting in as much time and effort now as you can to succeed the best way that you can. If then in August things don't go the way that you thought they were going to go, we'll cross that bridge at that time. Because we do have, you know, a, uh, an option there of an integrated foundation year that for both computing and engineering, you can come on to and, um, you know, pass that year and then you'll be able to progress on to year one. There's always options, always options. Okay. Yep, that's, that's reassuring. Um, and then on the other side of that, uh, Peter just had asked about um, additional opportunities after your degree, so master's programs. So we do do various um, programs where you can go on to do do masters, um, PhD, etc. So, so there's plenty of opportunities to continue on after you graduate with us. Um, okay, so probably the last question. I think just conscious of time here. Um, <clears throat> in terms of assessment for the courses, I presume this varies depending on which course you're doing. But um, someone's just asked me about the breakdown between exams and coursework. Um, roughly what would be the kind of percentage breakdown there? It's uh, different. Well, it's it's different for each of the courses, but mm. largely, you know, most of the courses are moving toward a higher degree of coursework now rather than set exams. So the coursework would be spread out for you over the semester and that helps you to regulate your learning and regulate your work rather than having one big exam at the end. Now there are there are a number of modules among the engineering that uh, do have a sit down exam, a three hour traditional exam at the end of it. Not so many as there were, but uh, there certainly are a few of them there. But if you were to make a rough estimate on it, you know you really are talking sixty percent, seventy percent coursework uh, overall, and about thirty percent 
sit down traditional written exam. So it, it really is about you working steady and working regularly and working throughout your degree rather than, than what sometimes happens, which is people leave everything to the very end and then cram for an exam or a three hour exam. So those days are gone. We are now operating on a, on a much uh, more steady path where it's assessments throughout the semester. And there may be a larger semester uh, assessment toward the end of the semester. And I, I think it's largely the same over most of the courses. Uh, there are some variations, uh, but bear in mind these are, we do this, based on student feedback, based on employer feedback, and based on industrial input. So the assessments that you're getting are done in, in the way they are to support you into the workplace and to support your learning over, uh, over the period of time that you're with us. And look, guys, there's no, uh, there's no way we can get away from the numbers. And we have an extremely good employability rate out of the engineering and computing courses at McGee, so we know we're doing the right thing. Okay, well, thanks, Justin. Um, so I have one final one that came in, and um, this is really the engineering, but probably can answer this across the board as well. Typically, how many hours per week would a student be in class versus the amount of independent study required? Um, I suppose, um, well, we would often get asked this um, about, you know, uh, contact hours, timetables and all of that. Um, for example, in first year, students will do uh, three 20 credit point modules. A 20 credit point module is equivalent to 200 hours of effort. That effort itself is divided up then into, you know, coursework assessments, timetable assessment. Um, tutorial, practicals, whatever it may take in order to teach that module. Um, so across the week, it roughly breaks down to six hours per module of, of contact time of, that, um, that you would have five to six hours for um, each 20 credit point module. So I would often tell our first years that, you know, anything between 16 and 18 hours per week is what you would be timetabled for. Um, but we do recommend that, you know, being in full-time education, that you do treat it like a full-time job. So outside of that contact time, that 18 hours that you would have, there is that expectation that you would be doing, you know, up to 40 hours of um, independent work, practicing, reading, doing assessments, um, you know, doing, um, practice examples in order to be able to be successful in each of the modules. So that, that's roughly a rule of thumb that we would work on. Uh, yeah, and I think if I could just reiterate what Maren's saying there, for all the courses that we have, you are investing in your future and it should be your full-time occupation. We understand the requirements for jobs outside the university and all those things, but Really, we have enough work to keep you busy full time all week if you're studying at, at the way you should be. And to get the best out of your course and to get the best out of your experience, my advice to you is to jump in two footed and do it 100%. Uh, that will give you the best chance to read around your subject, to understand your subject, to get all the extra things and to enjoy university life the way you should. So to take part in all the clubs that we have, to take part in the initiatives that we would run, the competitions that we run for computing and the competitions that we would run for engineering, the design build competitions and all. If you're not tuned in to be a student all week, it's very, very difficult for you to take advantage of all of those things. And for the guys that are listening, uh, look, you'll go out to a job now and there'll be 10 people lined up all with two ones or all with firsts or all with whatever. You have to differentiate yourself uh, and you differentiate yourself by uh, uh, really concentrating on your studies in university and, and really buying into the university experience. So don't worry so much about times in and out of study each week. Uh, if, if you can't afford the time to go in and out of study each week, do it part-time. 
But if you're full time, make sure you are full time in your study. <clears throat> yep, it's really, really good advice. Um, I think, guys, we probably better leave it there. Um, I think we've answered all the questions either either by text there or um, in person. So, but again, just email us with anything else that you can think of, and we'll be sending out all the, all the material afterwards, um, including the recording of this webinar. So um, that really wraps it up. Unless um, anyone else has anything you want to add, we've hopefully covered most most things for you. I know it was a it was a bit of a rush session trying to cover absolutely everything, but um, it's really just to give you give you a flavour of what goes on at McGee, and we can go into much more detail if you get in touch with us. We'll, we'll be happy to take you through the details. So thank you to everybody, everybody who's involved in the panel, and um, it's really useful. And to you guys as well for joining us. And we'll be in touch throughout the academic year just with more information about events that we'll be holding and hopefully get a chance to get you on campus at some point. So um, good luck with your exams and your choices. And we'll hopefully chat to you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very Thank much. You.